Hey, what's up guys? So in this video, we're going to be talking about the most essential nutrients and supplements for optimal workout performance. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Yeah, buddy. It's on now. Hey guys, my name is Zach and welcome to Nutrition Library where we take an evidence-based approach to uh, nutrition and supplementation. So in this video in particular, uh, what I want to do is kind of divide this into two primary categories when it comes to nutrients and supplements in order to improve exercise performance. And so the first category that I want to talk about are uh, supplements that that um, improve kind of neurological stimulation and somewhat delay the onset of neural fatigue. Um, and then the second category of supplements that I want to talk about are um, supplements that kind of increase what's been termed the proverbial pump, uh, so to speak. Let's say you drain your biceps, blood is rushing into your muscles, and that's what we call the pump. And so again, let's go ahead and dive into the top supplements to delay the onset of neural fatigue. Now, the first one on our list today is obviously going to be caffeine. Now, caffeine is one of the most proven ergogenic aids that exists. Um, it's one of the most studied uh, ergogenic aids that exist as well. And one of the primary reasons for this is that it has been repeatedly shown to increase power output as well as um, cardiovascular performance as well. And the reason for this is that it's been shown to be able to kind of um, increase the contractibility of muscle tissue as well as delay uh, neural fatigue specifically. Now, it does this by primarily blocking the adenosine receptor, which is one of your primary um, inhibitory uh, neurotransmitters that kind of induces sleep. And so by blocking this neurotransmitter uh, pathway, it is able to, one, inhibit the feelings of sleepiness and tiredness, uh, but two, it's also able to just generally speaking increase uh, neuronal excitement. Now, I do think it's worth noting here that um, it would probably behoove you to avoid things like coffee and tea before your workout. Now, uh, this might be too big of a topic to dive in um, into in this video in particular. However, um, coffees and teas in particular are extremely high in polyphenol content, which are typically looked at as health-promoting compounds. However, within the context of exercise specifically, they have been repeatedly shown to inhibit the adaptation to exercise, which is not a good thing. And so polyphenols are fairly potent um, anti-anabolic agents as well as anti-androgenic agents. And so again, avoiding caffeine sources like coffee and tea would probably be um, in your best interest if you're one, trying to maximize exercise performance and two, uh, maximize recovery as well. Now, I also think it's worth noting here that caffeine is somewhat of a double-edged sword. One, it obviously increases power power output and increases cardiovascular output, um, but it also seems to inhibit the um, mTOR metabolic pathway, which is not necessarily a good thing. Um, mTOR is your primary metabolic pathway that induces muscle protein synthesis, and so by inhibiting this pathway, caffeine may actually uh, prevent the adaptation to exercise if taken in too high of a dosage. Now, the second reason that caffeine is somewhat of a double-edged sword is that it also causes peripheral vasoconstriction, um, which also isn't necessarily a good thing. Um, vasoconstriction is kind of like the opposite of what you want during a workout, which is actually why people typically take uh, nitric oxide boosters in order to cause vasodilation. And so uh, caffeine actually causes, again, vasoconstriction and specifically uh, peripheral vasoconstriction, which actually causes the blood vessels to constrict, which somewhat inhibits your body's ability to actually get blood to muscle tissue. And so in my opinion, uh, this is why dosing caffeine is so important um, and why it's so important to somewhat limit your caffeine intake um, in order to, one, be able to get the benefits from caffeine, the increase in power output, as well as the improvement in uh, cardiovascular output. But it's also important to not dose it in too high of an amount to inhibit mTOR and cause too much vasoconstriction. Now, the second supplement on our list today is creatine. Now, I'm not going to spend a ton of time on creatine here. I have an entire video series that I did a couple months ago on the benefits of creatine and its benefits to exercise performance. Um, however, just for the sake of uh, simplicity here, I do want to kind of touch on its three primary benefits as to why I take it in my pre-workout shake. And one is that it aids in muscular hydration. Two is that it improves uh, the output and production of ATP on a cellular level, which is your primary uh, energy substrate within the context of the body. But three is that it also seems to 
to be a fairly potent myostatin inhibitor. And so myostatin is actually a compound in the body that inhibits muscular growth. And so by creatine's ability to inhibit myostatin, it theoretically also has the uh, capacity to kind of maximize uh, muscular growth. Now, there is a singular study that does suggest that it might be slightly more beneficial to take uh, creatine after a workout. However, I do like to take it before my workout and after my workout just to kind of cover my bases. And to be quite frank, the, the benefit does seem to be quite, uh, quite nominal at best. Now, the next supplement on our list today for energy specifically is uh, N-acetyl L-tyrosine. Now, N-acetyl L-tyrosine is somewhat of a semi-immediate precursor to the neurotransmitter dopamine in the central nervous system. A lot of people like to refer to it as quote unquote the pleasure uh, neurotransmitter, but this isn't necessarily uh, the most accurate way to describe uh, dopamine. Dopamine is actually more accurately described as the uh, motivation neurotransmitter or the anticipation neurotransmitter. It actually gets released in anticipation to pleasure, not actually pleasure itself. Dopamine is the neurotransmitter that actually motivates you to actually pursue something that your brain perceives as pleasurable. Now, I think one of the clearest examples of this would be with things like uh, sex and junk food and even exercise. The culmination of all three of these behaviors is a massive release in serotonin, which is actually more accurately described as your, quote, pleasure uh, neurotransmitter. And so when you climax after sex or eat a ton of junk food and even at the end of a workout, there is a massive release of serotonin that actually destroys dopamine levels. And dopamine, again, is the neurotransmitter that actually drives you uh, to pursue that release of serotonin that you get at the end of sex, eating junk food, and exercise. So in the context of exercise specifically, you want to uh, specifically increase dopamine levels as much as possible before and during a workout. Um, because when you do this, it actually delays the onset of fatigue and delays the onset of that serotonin spike that comes from the fatigue at the end of the workout. And so again, it's super important that you try to maximize the availability of dopamine before and during your workout. Now, there are typically three primary compounds that are used to increase dopamine levels. Uh, one is the amino acid phenylalanine, two is the amino acid tyrosine, and three is mucunipurines. And so because mucunipurines is so potent and somewhat addictive, I'm not a huge fan of taking it on a super regular basis. Um, and because phenylalanine and tyrosine are already found in super high quantities in food sources. My favorite option when it comes to increasing dopamine levels is N-acetyl L-tyrosine, which is just simply uh, the amino acid tyrosine that's been acetylated to actually be able to cross the blood-brain barrier slightly more proficiently than just the regular old um, amino acid tyrosine. And so um, N-acetyl L-tyrosine is just better at, again, crossing the blood-brain barrier and providing the available substrate that your uh, brain needs in order to produce adequate amounts of dopamine. Now, the last one that I've recently added to my pre-workout stack is nicotinamide mononucleotide, which is somewhat of kind of a of a fringe supplement currently in the anti-aging community. However, there is some recent research that suggests that it could be a possible ergogenic aid and aid in uh, muscular recovery, muscular retention, as well as performance. And so uh, the jury's still out on this one. However, I do um, actually like it and put about 300 milligrams in my pre-workout shake. And um, I do tend to see somewhat of a benefit from it. Now, the second category of supplements that I like to prioritize immediately before my workout are uh, supplements that have been shown to increase what again is called the proverbial pump. The most satisfying feeling you can get in the gym is the pump. Now there are two primary ways to do this. One is by increasing nitric oxide levels in the bloodstream and two is by um, increasing and intaking um, compounds that have been shown to be osmoregulators which are just simply uh, compounds that are able to balance uh, fluid in the body. Now the first supplement in this category is obviously going to be citrulline which is uh, the most well-studied um, supplement in terms of its ability to increase nitric oxide levels. Now, uh, arginine has been typically used for the last couple of decades in order to improve nitric oxide production. However, it's been recently shown um, within the past 10 years or so that citrulline is actually more effective at being absorbed than arginine is, and citrulline is readily converted into arginine by the liver once it's absorbed through the gut lining. And so one of the reasons that you want
want to increase the nitric oxide levels um, before a workout is that it one is going to increase oxygen availability to the muscle tissue during periods of high energy demand and two is it's going to cause vasodilation which means that uh, your body's actually able to get more uh, blood flow to the muscle tissue which is going to increase not only oxygen uptake but also uh, nutrient and fluid um, intake into the muscle tissues as well and so long story short here is that citrulline is one of the most effective supplements in order to increase nitric oxide um, in order to again increase oxygenation to the muscle tissue as well as um, increase the the delivery of nutrients to the muscle tissue during a workout now the next supplement on our list today is nitrates now nitrates are actually arguably more effective at increasing nitric oxide production um, than citrulline is however it does appear that it's doing this through a slightly different mechanism and one of the reasons that it again is so important to increase nitric oxide levels before a workout um, is especially if you are consuming things like caffeine which again is causing vasoconstriction and um, and so combining things like citrulline and nitrates together do a fantastic job of counteracting the negative effects of caffeine on the circulatory system now unfortunately nitrates are extremely difficult to find in supplementation form uh, now there are a couple of companies that are making things like betaine nitrate as well as creatine nitrate now that you can find in a few different supplements however it, it's almost impossible to buy these as kind of like a one-off supplement or a single ingredient supplement and so when it comes to nitrate intake in particular I am a huge fan of consuming beetroot juice before a workout simply because it contains a ton of nitrates in it as well as other beneficial compounds that we'll get to uh, here in a minute and it does appear that consuming roughly 250 to 500 milliliters of beetroot juice before a workout does appear to provide enough nitrates to significantly increase nitric oxide production and so uh, what I like to do is combine beetroot juice with citrulline and because of this I've actually noticed that I don't have to take as much citrulline if I take too much citrulline with uh, beetroot juice I do notice that I get a little bit nauseous because my uh, blood pressure actually drops too much too quickly and so when it comes to combining citrulline and beetroot juice before a workout it probably would be prudent to uh, limit your dosage of each just to assess your tolerance and then kind of increase it from there now when it comes to beetroot powder I know this is going to be a common question in the comment section I would avoid beetroot powder simply because it takes roughly 40 grams of beetroot powder which is just a ton of beetroot powder in order to um, equal the amount of nitrates that are found in beetroot juice and then when it comes to beetroot extracts most beetroot extracts I would also avoid simply because they are uh, typically isolated and extracted for betaine content not necessarily nitrate content Content. And so again, if you were specifically looking for high nitrate content, uh, beetroot juice is going to be your best bet. Now, the next supplement on our list is actually not a nitric oxide uh, precursor, but it's actually an osmoregulator, and that is betaine. Now, betaine is also referred to as trimethylglycine or TMG for short, and again, is just simply an osmoregulator and helps to increase fluid balance in the uh, circulatory system, uh, which again is going to cause vasodilation and improve uh, nutrient and oxygen delivery to the muscle tissue during exercise. Now, betaine is technically a choline derivative and a choline metabolite specifically um, and is super important in the body for overall circulatory health as well as helping the body with methylation. And so betaine is actually typically looked at as an overall um, health compound, not just an ergogenic aid. Now, lucky for us, betaine is also found in super high amounts in beets and that's actually why betaine is called betaine um, it's because it's found in beets and this is just another reason why I'm such a huge fan of beetroot juice not only does it have super high amounts of nitrates but it also has super high amounts of betaine as well as sugar which actually brings us to our next compound on our list which is sugar. Now, honestly, I think carbs and more specifically sugar get super slept on when it comes to improving athletic performance, especially kind of in like the, the low carb health world that we kind of find ourselves in right now. Um, now to be clear, I am somewhat of a fan of a moderate to low carbohydrate diet. However, specifically within the context of exercise, carbohydrates and sugar in particular are extremely important to exercise performance. Now, carbohydrates and sugar 
sugar in particular obviously provide an immediate substrate for energy production at a cellular level. Um, however, they are also extremely important for um, osmoregulation as well. So when you increase blood sugar, it also draws a ton of water into the bloodstream. And that's simply because of the fact that water follows anywhere sugar goes. And so if you want to increase hydration as well as um, just overall energy production during a workout, um, consuming carbohydrates before and during a workout is extremely important to maximizing overall athletic performance. Now, lucky for us, again, beetroot juice is extremely high, not only in nitrates and betaine, but also some simple sugars as well. And so I love loading up on beetroot juice before my workout and then consuming things like honey during my workout. Um, and more specifically, dextrose. I've, I've recently added some dextrose um, into my intro workout shake um, just to kind of improve overall hydration and energy production during my workout and to somewhat delay fatigue. But again, I can't overstate the importance of, um, of simple carbohydrate consumption before and during a workout in order to maximize athletic performance. Now, the last one on our list today, I think is another one that gets super slept on, which is salt. And the reason salt is so important to athletic performance is one, that it's one of the most potent osmoregulators in the body. Sodium is your extracellular cation that draws fluid outside of cells and in particularly into the bloodstream. And so it helps to improve overall body hydration. Uh, but it also is extremely important for just overall nerve development and nerve um, signaling. And so when you have a, a sodium deficiency in particular, um, there can be a lot of cramping and just hindered nerve function in general. Now, other than that, guys, I think that's all I have for this video. Um, I was going to add in some supplements that I would avoid taking before a workout. However, I do think I'm going to save that for my next video just because it is a topic in and of itself. And so um, if you guys have any questions about anything that was in this video, please feel free to leave a comment uh, down below. But other than that, I think I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much.